Now we're going to do step six. How to answer an exam standard question in 10 easy steps, step six. What we now want to look at is the tax relief. And the example we have in this question, not always in every question, but in this question, requires us to remember how to deal with um, writing down allowances on a reduced balance basis. Okay, the most common method. So, here's the narrative excerpt from the question. Treecore Co. pays tax at an annual rate of 30% one year in arrears. It can claim capital allowances on a 25% reducing balance basis. This is seen many times. So all I would say is we want a separate working. Nothing more than that. Here is my working. We've got our tax relief, we've got a column for years, we've got a column for description, a column for the allowance, column for relief, column for timing. Now, some people try and do this slightly more quickly. I can't be bothered because however you do it, there is a certain requirement to get uh, a balancing figure at the end. And, and doing it in the full manner that I'm going to do, I think is easier than anything else. It stops us making silly mistakes. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the writing down allowance. All I'm going to do is to follow the instruction. That is, I'm going to take 25% of the reduced balance. So looking at the numbers, 25% of the initial, uh, original capital expenditure of 250,000 is 63,000. Now please note, I've rounded everything to the nearest thousand. Why have I done that? Well, I have a tendency to round everything in investment appraisal to save time because my belief is that your examiner doesn't care too much about accuracy simply because investment appraisal relates to the future, therefore a lot of things are uncertain, and secondly, there's a lot of rounding associated with the discount factors already. But the specific reason why I've done it in this case is that we were told in the question to round to the nearest thousand. And if that's the case, we do as we are told. So we get a written down value of 187,000 and then we take 25% of that. And then we get a further written down value of 140,000 and we take 25% of that. That's fine. When we get to the final year, year four, we have to remember that we dispose of the asset. So what we want to do is we want to look at the difference between the written down value at the beginning of year four, in this case 105, and the proceeds, the residual value, 5,000. That gives us a balancing allowance. Now, it's in a balancing allowance, of course, because we are further writing down the asset. But I must say, I don't know if this is going to always be the case, but in every single F9 paper I've ever seen, oh, and I've seen the lot, and all of the previous papers of this type, I have only ever seen in a balancing allowance. I've never seen a balancing charge. So, once we've got our allowance, all we do is multiply by 30%. Because, of course, the cash implication will not be the allowance, but the reduction in tax paid as a result of the allowance. So we simply take 30% of the allowance to get the relief. And critically, we have to look at timing. Your examiner always does the same thing here, and I like to copy the examiner. You know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So what I've done here is said this. The investment is in year one from a tax perspective. That's what the examiner does. And we are told that tax is one year in arrears. Therefore, the first tax relief will be in year two. If you get the first one right, numbering down two, three, four, five is not going to be difficult at all. So, in summary, all I would say to you is something like this, is know how to do these sort of workings. There are a number of workings that your examiner will ask again and again and again and again, and you have to know them going into the exam. No ifs, no buts.